Hi. It's a stunningly beautiful day. I've already seen at least eight little honeybees um, buzzing around as I was digging a, a new garden uh, through winter's old soil and tossing it about. We needed the sun today, some warmth, a reminder of the spring that is coming and is here and is about us and the life through flowers and trees and walks and fresh fruit. We needed this. It's been a hard week. Our collective pain body as a country and as a community has been keenly experienced. And we hold our brothers and sisters in Nova Scotia with us as we manage and navigate these strange times. It's good to come out from under the blankets after a lot of grief and despair and our psalm speaks so acutely to how so many of us are feeling that there's often a feeling of being abandoned of such despair there's nowhere to go where it isn't uh, an oppression of, of pain and grief that undoes us the psalmist with a timeless quality speaks to us from this place, from a place that so many of us reside on a regular basis and crawl out from on a regular basis as well. In the psalmist's, psalmist's first words of lament, it is about reaching to the one who will hear, who can be trusted and will listen and hold and fold us into its holiness. The psalmist does not hold back and, and we are called not to hold back from our pain and our anxiety and all the feelings that are not just uncomfortable but but almost indescribable when they overwhelm us. But we are called out to express this, at least to the one who can hear, hold, and be constant with us, who does not judge, who is not prejudiced, is just completely and utterly constant. We are called by the psalmist to cry out in full knowledge on some level that this matters and will make a difference. And through the lament and the and the utter disparity when death feels at hand when we want only to be buried in our brokenness and left. We open up a small sliver that reaches out and we are heard. And as a result, we come to know some relief. We cannot quantify that relief only recognize that we have been heard and that we are being provided with a collective conscious love-based understanding 
that only the God that wraps us and fabrics us together is complete in. And then there is acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we're, we've been heard. We acknowledge that something has lifted. And we begin to accept and out from that we heal and it is in that healing place that we start to rise out of some of our pain and begin to purpose our lives again um, Maybe it's simply going outside and sitting in the sun, planting some seeds, sharing a meal, giving thanks, offering out a hand of support, being present, being quiet. There's no quantifying how we purpose our lives. It's not about what, it's about how. It's about intention. It's about quality. There's no gauge that says this much is enough and this much isn't. God lives, rests, and becomes in the simplest of things. In the honeybee, in the bicycle, in the tulip, in the tree, in the grandchild in the swing, in the snack, in the voice that offers comfort, in a stroll, in a view, in being present to one's own emotions and feelings and simply acknowledging that they're there. The psalm today is gravity. It grounds us. It gives us direction through lamentation, acknowledgement, acceptance, and inevitable healing. And yeah, we may have to start it all over again every day. That is the human experience. It is the human experience that acknowledges the divine truth. I started a little garden that I hope will be an offering. It's small but it gives me meaning. And with the digging of the soil and the refreshment of the sun and the honeybees, I am in that moment, not separate. And when I experience that unseparateness, that synchronicity, that is when I am free and when I know that everything is holy, everything has a belonging that has tapestried our lives with everything. The blankets can come off, the darkness can be dispelled. And in a brief moment of joy and the, the oneness and the wonder of so much life, we find our place. We can be grateful for this, even in our grief. They are not separate. Everything belongs.
So as we continue to walk through this time of transformation, we hold so much with us, but we do not hold it alone. And in that holding, in that love, we find ourselves at one with that which provides all with everything. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to a community that is rising out and up and seeing their belonging.